Hey, welcome to the first video in the Calculus 2 playlist. So in this video, I'm just going to introduce and explain integration by table, also known as the table method of integration. Um, but in general, this whole course is going to be available at engineerforfree.com slash calculus2. And there'll be tons of videos there and extra practice problems on all things integration. So a single integration, like lots of different methods, um, double integration, triple integration, and maybe even partial derivatives if we go that far, we'll see. Um, but you can click the link, I'll put the link in the description below as well, so you can just jump straight to that and make sure you check out the whole course. So getting started with integration by table, it's not like really real integration because really all we're do going to do is we'll have a formula sheet or a table of integrals, which I'll show you in a second. And we're just gonna rearrange formulas, rearrange integrals until we get them into a certain form, and then we can just jump straight to the solution. Uh, it is a critical skill to know because often in exams you'll be given a formula sheet or a table of integrals really and you'll be able to, you'll be expected to be able to do this and it's just going to speed up the number of problems that you can solve because no one really cares about the, the really basic integrals um, they just want to show you the, the, the professors will just want to see that you are able to follow the steps of certain methods like u substitution and integration by parts and stuff like that and once you get down to a basic enough integral you can just throw out the answer so um, a basic integral table pretty much looks like this, where we're going to have a bunch of integrals here. And this is a link actually on engineerforfree.com. I'll also put the link in the description below so you can jump straight to this integral table. And you can also download the PDF version of it if you want to print it out. It's probably going to be pretty similar to what you have in your class. But anyways, this is an integral table with several integrals that are just good to know. Um, it's not comprehensive because there are so many more that could be included, but it's a pretty decent collection and it's actually typical of what you might be provided with on a calculus 2 exam as a formula sheet. So often when you're solving, like I said, when you're solving integrals, anytime you get one of your integrals into one of the forms that you see here, then you can immediately write the associated solution rather than computing the actual last steps. And so this is what's referred to as the table method or solving integrals by table. And uh, down here at the bottom, there's also going to be a lot of different trigonometric identities um, that you will probably be provided with as well on your Calculus 2 formula sheet, no matter what school you go to. And anytime that you see any one of these, you can swap them, uh, one side of the equation for the other. Anytime you see an available substitution or something that looks like it might help you in ultimately getting towards one of these integrals in the table. So basically, normally you're going to use a trig identity uh, to get your integral into one of the forms that's present up here in the table, and then you can immediately jump to a solution. So, for example, if you were given, let's say, the integral of 2 sine theta cos theta, well, 2 sine theta cos theta is the same thing as sine 2 theta. So you could just swap that out, so the integral would be the same thing. The integral of 2 sine theta cos theta would be also equal to the integral of sine 2 theta. And then, if you knew that uh, up here in the table, we have this integral where sine a of x d of x is equal to 1 over a cos a x plus c. So in this case, you would have sine 2x dx, and then the solution to that integral would just be 1 over 2 cos of 2x all plus c, which is an arbitrary constant, um, which you're always going to be seeing just as plus c, just like some random number that we don't know when we're dealing with indefinite integrals. So that's pretty much what we do. Um, let's jump and take a look at the example problem, which is i is equal to the integral of tan squared x dx. So this would be a typical problem that someone would ask you to say like, hey, find out what is i. And when you first look at this, you probably think like, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Um, but I would recommend to you when you see a trig function, the first thing to do is always check to see if there's a trig substitution. So let's jump back to the table. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see there's a line here that says 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. So that's a trig identity, and let's write that down on our sheet. So that was 1 plus tan squared theta, or we can swap it out for x here. You can substitute x and theta like back and forth. It doesn't really matter. It's just something to describe the angle. Um, this was all equal to secant squared of x. And if you wonder what secant squared is, well, secant is just 1 over cos, and secant squared is just 1 over cos squared. But anyways, we want to rearrange to isolate for tan squared so we can swap it out for something else. So we just have to say that tan squared of x is equal to secant squared of x minus 1. So because these are equal to each other, and we have tan squared of x right here, 
we could just rewrite this integral i. We could also write it as the integral of secant squared x minus 1, all with dx. Now, generally, when you have an integral that involves two terms, it's often going to be easy to separate each of those terms out and integrate them separately. So this is all the same thing. This is still i is equal to the integral of secant squared of x dx minus the integral of 1 dx. And with the 1, we can just get rid of that. Like multiplying anything by 1, it doesn't really matter. And now we have two different integrals. We have the integral of secant x dx, and we have the integral of dx. Now when we look in our integral table, we can see that there is an entry for the integral of secant squared x dx, which is equal to 10 of x plus c. So let's write that down in our sheet. So that was the integral of secant squared of x dx. This is exactly equal to 10 of x plus c, the arbitrary constant. And when we look for the integral of dx, it's going to be up at the top here. The integral of dx is just equal to x plus c. So let's write this in here as well for our reference. The integral of dx is equal to x plus c. Okay, so we have the integral of secant squared x dx right here. So we can replace that with exactly what it is. So i is going to be equal to, first of all, tan of x plus c. And then we're going to subtract the integral of dx, which is right here, which is going to be minus x plus c. And we can get rid of these brackets if we want, and this is just going to become minus c. Um, but we have basically we have an arbitrary constant minus another arbitrary constant. And an arbitrary constant is just a number that we don't know. And one number that we don't know minus another number that we don't know is still a number that we don't know. So we can just combine those into one single arbitrary constant. And we can rewrite our solution here as i is equal to tan of x minus x plus c, some arbitrary constant that we don't know. And there you go. So we've solved the integral i. So we had the integral of tan squared x dx. And the actual solution to this is tan of x minus x plus an arbitrary constant. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much how you do the table method. Um, I'm going to go through a few more examples in the following videos on other examples just so you can get used to the idea. But basically all we're doing is just rearranging our formulas or our integrals to get them in a familiar form that matches something in an integral table and then jumping straight to the solution. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.